Michael here, it always works. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, yeah, I'll just like speak extra loud or something. Okay, uh, hi people, hi. Uh, today we're going to talk about debugging JavaScript, which is something that for some reason people don't really talk about, so we're going to talk about it. Uh, my name is Sherman. I am called Sherman, not sure, or like Charmaine. I don't know why sometimes that happens. Uh, I'm, do not be fooled by this accent. It sounds Singaporean, but it's not. It's actually Malaysian. <laughs> yeah, um, and I work in sunny Singapore as a front-end web engineer at Vicky. I don't know if any of you have heard of Vicky, but we are here. Um, and um, I'm also a Rikas Center alumni. And the reason I met, why I mentioned these two communities slash companies um, is because like, there are two uh, communities that I really love. So if you want to talk about any of that, you can come talk to me about it. Uh, but uh, today we're not here to talk about that. We are going to be talking about debugging. And in programming <coughs> world, whenever someone mentions debugging, uh, it usually refers to the process that you take to fix defects in your code. So something may not be working right, you might be throwing an error, and debugging is like the steps that you take to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. So yeah, who loves debugging? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, all <laughs> three of you, literally one, two, three. <laughs> Um, so debugging can be kind of painful, like it's this thing like, oh, this is a, this is a bug, I gotta fix it. <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna, before we start, I'm gonna get a quick survey of like, you know, um, okay, how many people here write front-end JavaScript? Okay, uh, majority, great, because this talk is for you. Um, how many of you use console.log to, you know, print out stuff when you debug? Yeah, keep your hands up. Uh, how many of you also use the Chrome uh, debugger tools, and by the current debugger tools, I'm talking about this guy over here. Okay, good, good, quite a good number. So that's good. Um, I'm gonna, in that case, since like we have like half of the room who have used this before, um, we're gonna talk, by, by debugger, I mean like specific like debugging tools over here, uh, this specific tab here. Yeah, can you just get a quick show of hands on who actually uses that specific, okay. All right, good, excellent. Um, so we're going to be talking about that a little bit more today and how to get a little bit better. Today it's not so much about like talking about tools but more on like the workflow for debugging. Um, I did a quick poll thingy on Twitter and like 30 people answered which is like not bad. Um, but like most people, uh, like half the people actually don't use the debugger tools for debugging I realize. Uh, quite a number of people still prefer like just using console.log and I was like I wonder why. Is it because like it's hard to use or I don't know, maybe it's just a different process. So I'm gonna run through today some of the things that I found kind of useful or helpful um, to like, you know, up your debugging game. And this is more for people who are beginner or intermediate programmers who have done quite a bit of debugging and want to get better at it. So if you're like a super advanced JavaScript debugger person thingy, then, um, sorry, <laughs> this is not for you. But if you have tips or tricks or if you want to shout out like stuff, you can. Oh, and hopefully this talk will help you like explain how to use debugger tools better to the more junior programmers in your team. So hopefully that's useful. Um, and we're gonna be talking mostly about debugging in Chrome slash Firefox DevTools. Uh, so sorry, this is mostly for front-end people, but most of you do front-end, so that's great. Um, a lot of things that we'll be doing today will be on the Chrome DevTools, but I tested it out <coughs> on Firefox, and they're like analogous tools to do it too, so very good. Uh, sorry, I don't know much about debugger tools on Edge, but if anybody has tips, that would be fantastic. Just want to point out, you can use Chrome to debug Node.js. Ah, yes, cool stuff. Um, if we have time, maybe like you know, we can talk about that too. Yes. So let's talk about like regular debugging that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, maybe like if you're a new programmer, um, this is like a process that you go through quite often. Um, and I'm gonna just run through like you know what it might look like uh, when you encounter a bug. And this is specific as, uh, to when you're inheriting code that you're not familiar with. So, example. Uh, all right. So, I have an app, and the app does something, huh? Um, and I'm told that this app is supposed to take in a list of numbers, let's say one, two, three, and sum it up for you. So it's fairly simple. Um, and it should print out the result. But when I receive this app, I'm like, oh, no, it doesn't work. Um, we don't know why. So 
what is the first thing that you do? All right, uh, assuming that you have the source code, let's see. Oh, where did my code go? <coughs> Not this one. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, I'm out of flux, yes. I am on flux. Disable for an hour. All right. All nice and bright. So, okay, you have an app. And because I wrote this, um, and it's intentionally a little bit buggy, so you know, don't do what I'm doing here. Um, and I'm just going to go through very quickly like the different parts of it. So it's just a form that takes in um, that when you submit the form, it gets a user input, so like a list of numbers, for example. Um, and then it takes the numbers and gets a sum, and it displays it. So there are three parts here where something could have gone wrong. So when you're looking at this and you don't know what, this code look, what each part of the code does, like the very natural thing is to be like, okay, well, let me just make sure that you know, it's doing what we think it's doing. Um, and the functions that do all those three things are up here. Uh, but don't worry about details. So a very common thing to do would be like, okay, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm a numbers correct. So dot log numbers, number. Oh no, auto complete. Um, and then I'll be like, oh, is the result correct? Um, I don't know. Let's find out, and we see what, where you know where things go wrong. And then uh, I have like live reload on this, so I'm gonna do that. And you check out your console thing, console. Yeah. So I'll be like, okay, let's see if this works. And I'm like, okay, great, my numbers are correct, but like something went wrong when I was summing things up, right? Um, and I'm like, okay, well, something's wrong, and I get some, and then you go to get some, and then maybe you like console.log each uh, number there or something, and then figure it out. I don't know, some of you might, be see, might see the bug already, but yeah, so it's a very common uh, like workflow. You just go and put console logs, see what's wrong, and then like, you know, fine tune the problem. Um, so this, this has something to, there are some like, benefits to doing this. Uh, for one is that it's quite beginner friendly. All you need is like console.log and it's straightforward. You just like dump things out where you want to check what the values are to make sure they're okay. So how many people like, you know, have done this at some point in their life? You know, like, yeah, just console log all the things. <laughs> um, but it's a real pain point here because like, you have to go back and forth on the editor and browser. Uh, so it's like a little bit of a disconnect there. And um, at least console.log everywhere. Like, who has shipped code with console.log in it? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I admit it, the shame. Um, <laughs> it's okay, Every, everyone does that. Unless you have tools, like there are some tools now that, that, that you can integrate with Webpack to like, get rid of console.logs for you. So that's very nice. But you know, ideally, you shouldn't have to pollute your code with all these like, logs. Uh, and sometimes you have the output format, you don't know like, oh, where did this, like, you know, numbers come from, is it like the first time or the second time, and then you have to like, oh, first time, second time, or like, this came from this function, and yeah, it's, it's a mess. Uh, so I was like, okay, there must be a better way to debug, and um, I saw this, like, when a friend of mine, like, used the Chrome debugger tools, and I was just like, what is this? That's awesome. Uh, so this is what it would look like if you're using, like, Chrome debugger tools. <coughs> so we're gonna show, not tell, I'm gonna, get rid of all the console.logs here. Oops. So I'll just get rid of that, get it back to its original state. Don't mind the subline text. <laughs> Please pay up message. Um, and okay, so I'm back to my state here. I'm like, all right, great. Um, ooh, things are not working. And the first thing that I would do is uh, go to the sources tab and look for my main.js. And this is the same code that you saw just now. Right, it's all the same stuff. Um, and if you are new to using debugger tools, the easiest way to start is to replace each console.log. So wherever you usually put console.log, just add a breakpoint. And if you're not, if not, if you're not used breakpoints before, uh, what breakpoints are are basically like, hey, pause your code here. Like I want to look into it. So you put breakpoints in. Um, in this case, I want to see what happens when I get numbers what happens when I get results. Uh, and I run my code again. And breakpoints do what they do. They pause your code so you can like, look around. And the nice part is that you can see what your variables are um, in your, like, when your code is running. So you can either see them in line here, or you can see them in your scope. You can see like, numbers and results are defined because we haven't like, run that line of code yet. We haven't gotten our numbers. And what you can do is, when you're in a pause state, is uh, you can run the code 
which will run until it hits the next breakpoint. Or you can uh, step through the code line by line, and this is what I use most of the time. Uh, so uh, it's a lot going on here, but you can just focus on like where the code is, and also like these controls over here. Like we will be talking mostly about that, and also this uh, part here with the scope. Yeah. All right. So you step through to the you step into the uh, line 48. You get your numbers. That looks good. Awesome. Uh, and then you run the next line of code, which is get sum. And you see, oh, well, here's a problem. The results returning not a number. Something's wrong there. So what do you do? Um, and so what I would do is I'll just like, OK, keep on running it. Uh, you'll finish running that particular input. And then I run it again. And this time around, um, I'll just like run the first one, because I know it's not a problem there. I can remove the break point. Uh, look, instead of running this line and going like, straight over to the next line, I'm just going to step into the next function call. So this is like the third uh, function, that you, third thing that you can do when you're in a pause state. And what stepping into is that does is that it jumps into the get some function itself so you can run your code line by line. And here I can see that numbers is correctly passed in. Um, and result and num are still like undefined because you haven't done stuff yet. So I'm just going to step into it, step into it, and then uh, step into the for loop. And then you can see how num updates. So you're looking at the first uh, number. And I'm going to step over. And you can see here in your block as well what, your, what it, uh, iteration you're on. And I'm going to step over again. And immediately I see what the problem is. Um, like result is undefined. And you plus one to it. And it becomes like not a number. And you can verify this by doing like undefined plus one in your console just to be sure. And you be like, yes, that does not work. That's terrible. OK. Um, and the cool part here is that now that you know where the problem is, what you can do is just to change um, your code like in line here. And you can save it. Um, it doesn't actually persist the changes to disk, but you can just do it for this round. And you can see that it actually works now. Plus 60. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to guess it's correct. Yeah. Um, you can add this uh, file. You get to your workspace. Uh, I've tried it; it works, and that way you kind of use Chrome as your IDE, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, it makes it really easy to debug and fix and try things out uh, when you don't have access to the source code itself. Sometimes. So yeah, that's uh, pretty. I don't know. When I first saw this, I was just like, "That's amazing!" You know, that's super cool. Um, like especially the inline values, that was really really useful. So yeah, um, I don't know. Did, is that new to anyone? No, some people. Yeah. Okay. Good. It means that people are using debugger tools. Uh, some other cool stuff that you can do are conditional breakpoints. So you can add a breakpoint, but you can also set it so that it only runs if a certain condition happens. So this was uh, if let's say result, uh, if result is not a number. This is how you check if results not a number. Um, and if you want to run it, and in this case, I'm just going to put in the, I'm just going to save that so it still like, hits it. And then when I run it, um, if it's not a number, it's going to, uh, it's going to break. If not, if it's already fixed, then it, yeah, let's see. Yeah, if it's already fixed and now it's uh, running fine. Yeah, it shouldn't. Yeah, it shouldn't run it. Oh wait, let me try that again. That wasn't clear. Yeah, it wouldn't run the breakpoint. So that's super useful. Um, and if you're using, let's say, a third-party library and you have an error that's running in it and you want to fix it, for example, let's say I have jQuery. Um, I don't know if people use to, still use jQuery. Uh, and you want to debug it because it's throwing an error and you can't figure out why. Uh, what you can do is that you can pretty print it. So you can look into it. And this is also super useful when you're looking into uh, obfuscated code and you're trying to figure out like, what's going on. So those two, those two things I really like. Um, yeah, there's also an option to pause on exceptions. So if, let's say there is an exception that occurs, let's say um, it throws an error somewhere, you can automatically break it there so you don't have to like, search for it line by line. So that's also useful. Okay. Um, so the, cur the general workflow that happens when you're using debugger tools uh, goes something like this. Like first, you reproduce your problem, uh, just to make sure it's actually a problem. Sometimes it isn't. 
and then you find a line or lines where the problem could potentially occur. Um, and then you set breakpoints where interesting things happen. You run the code again, and when it hits the breakpoints, uh, it stops, it pauses, and you just like step through the code line by line to make sure what it's doing is expected. Uh, you can step into functions if necessary, just to make sure that functions are behaving the way you expect them to. Uh, and look at the relevant variables, uh, either like in line or in the scope. Um, using the command, and you can use the command line to ver verify what you think is really happening, uh, and hopefully like, identify the root problem. So in this like really trivial example, uh, it's just like a simple technical error, but sometimes the root problem like comes from like a design decision, so that might take a little bit more time to figure out. Um, and I actually adapted this from uh, an article by Alyssa Park. Uh, fewer pain points, you don't really have to switch between windows. Um, you don't need to log anything to console, you don't have to change to your console a log tab, sorry, to your console tab just to like, see what the outputs are. Uh, it keeps your code clean, so no more shipping console.logs, yay. And you can even debug things without access to your source code. So there was like an actual example where uh, only on production for some reason, uh, like there was a, an error that was like crashing the wiki homepage and we were like, what's going on? Because you know, it's from a third party library and we had no idea like, you know, what is there. You can't console the log in it. So what we did is to do the unobfuscate the code and to set a breakpoint and just like step through it until we figured out that, oh, that was, it was just like reading in something it wasn't supposed to and it was badly formatted. So that, it, gets, it gets pretty useful in that sense. Um, especially when you are also debugging code that you're not familiar with, like someone else might have written it so you don't know how it flows. Uh, so yeah, there were a couple of resources that I found that were quite interesting. Um, there was one by Alyssa Part from 2009, and like in a list of like debuggers, it didn't even mention Chrome because Chrome debugger tools did not exist back then. Um, but it has a little challenge um, where it gives you a buggy app, and you're supposed to like fix or like discover the causes of a list of bugs. So it's like a murder mystery thing. That was pretty interesting. Um, there's some that a little bit that don't quite work because this is from 2009, but uh, do check it out. And also like uh, this is an article about like Chrome debugger tips. Like, I learned about the conditional breakpoints from here. So check that out, that's pretty cool. Uh, and so yeah, that's, that's it. Um, thank you for listening. You can tweet at me if you found it useful or if you have questions or if you want to like, add on to like, whatever discussion we may have. Um, and yeah, we're hiring, so. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky is like some of the, the, Vicky is some of the best engineers I've worked with, so you know. Uh, yeah, you might want to think about that. So yeah, um, stuff, stuff, stuff. And I think we have time for questions. Or like tips if people have like <coughs> things that they want to talk about. If you do have access to the source code, you can add the debugger. Yes, yes. Yeah, Thank you. To I totally forgot to mention that. Oh, that might sound like text. Sound like text. Yeah. So this is equivalent to this is equivalent to adding a breakpoint. If you don't want to like go into the sources tab and like look for a practical line, this will also like break it. So that's useful. Yeah. Uh, any other like debugging tips because I'm also like still learning this stuff and any like <coughs> tricks will be useful. Y yes, uh, person at the back. You see your stack trace there. You can see yes. Calls. Where do those calls come from? Yeah, stack traces are really useful, especially when you have like a bunch of things running and you don't know like where the error is coming from, like who triggered it, triggered it. like the stack trace is also really good to go up and like figure out who is calling that function. So that's a good one. Um, there are a couple of them here. Yes. Uh, with you talking about evaluating on the console, you can evaluate things in your current scope, which is quite useful. Yes, actually, yeah, that's true. I've heard of that, but I've actually never tried it. So let's say if I stuck here, like, can I? I can just do like numbers, and it should give me that, even though it's not in scope generally. Oh yeah, you're right. That's awesome. Yes. Any more? Yes. Uh, breaking on events can be very useful when you're dealing with the party library. So. Uh, when I used to write stuff on Angular, uh -huh. uh, and I didn't know in that huge code <coughs> where something was uh, triggering, so I would sometimes use a uh, breakpoint on click, for example. Yes. Event listener breakpoint. Yes. Uh, that's and that would take me deep inside the first part where Angular first listens for that click and starts working with it, and I could work back from it. 
that's also really useful. So I think like, for example, if I want to like listen on click events, yeah. like I, I want to know what happens when I click, right? So if I click on something, it'll like give me, oh, well, probably jQuery is listening for it. I don't know why I wasn't using jQuery in this. So yeah, yeah, useful things to know. jQuery listens to your clicks regardless of whether you want it to or not. Um, yeah, like, oh, what's going on? Anyway, let's see, let's see if it listens to other clicks too. Um, okay, cool. That's also a really good one. Any other, you had one? There's a um, plugin available if you, if you use Angular for your front end, mm -hmm. which actually knows about the, old, uh, like, uh, the various constructs in Angular and then helps you, okay, this is in the controller, this is in your, uh, in your model. So uh, it becomes much, much clearer because like, you jump into a, any average Angular stuff, you go, what? Yeah, it's like, so, so it's both available for Firebug as well as for, for the Chrome debugger tools. So the general tip is go to the Chrome store and look for extensions to the uh, to the debugging tools. There are a few around that make your life easier. And specifically, like I said, when you're in Angular, Angular 2, they have plugins for, to make your life easier with, that, with those. Awesome. Yeah, there's also React debugger tools. If you're, not, if you're doing React and don't have React like debugger tools, they definitely get on it. Same for Angular as well. So like, good stuff. Um, I think there was another hand somewhere, no? Another one? Yes, yes. Uh, you can actually modify your code on the source code files and then see if your assumptions of what a fix would be works. Oh yeah, like uh, I, the, how I demoed just now, are you referring to that? Yeah, you just type out whatever you feel like is the right answer and then you save and then the code will run and then you can see what your fix, whether it works right on the Chrome shell. Right, cool. I think I had a demo on that too, so yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, if there are no other questions and stuff, do we still have time? Um, time for, for one more question if you want. Yeah. Okay. Hit escape. Yes. What was that? Hit escape. Escape? You escape key. Uh huh. You get a little console at yeah. the bottom. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I usually don't use this one much, but. Oh, that's cool, actually. I didn't know you could do that. Nice. So you don't have to like be changing paths all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.